Hey everyone, this is Sebastian on the Spirit Crest channel and today I'm going to be talking about my Adirondack chair and stool build. I'm going to be taking you through the list of materials, uh, the tools I needed, as well as the steps and jigs I used. I've built about six chairs so far and one stool and one of my chairs is actually on display at JTM Sawmills in Saint Lazare, uh, Quebec and soon I'll hopefully be able to sell them online as well. All right, so the first thing in uh, setting up our, this project was getting the materials I needed. Um, I ordered some plans from Jackman Works for the Adirondack chair. The stool I ended up building myself. Um, I didn't have any plans for that, but I copied a, a similar stool that was online and used uh, the same dimensions as on the chair so that it would match. So the materials I used for the chair was 30 linear feet of uh, pine wood one by eight inch nominal and it was pre-planed on all four sides seeing as I don't have access to a planer in my setup currently. Then I used uh, three carriage bolts per side so six carriage bolts in total and then six washers and six nuts uh, for the base of the chair. Um, next you need 68 stainless steel wood screws to fasten all the seat slats and the back slats onto the chair. The tools I used for the build were a jigsaw, a table saw, a router, which I ended up building a table for, uh, a sander, as well as a handheld drill. Next I'm going to go through some of the jigs that I worked on uh, and built for this pr uh, setup. So uh, let me show you that next. Okay so here we have the three jigs that I used and we'll start with these blue ribbons. This is actually um, a proof of concept that I was trying out here uh, because I was trying to find a way to build a drilling jig for um, the leg piece so that each of the seat slats on the leg piece has pre-drilled pre holes so that I wouldn't have to um, spend so much time during assembly finding where exactly uh, each of the seat slats needs to go as well as for the back pieces. So these pieces also need to have pre-drilled holes so that we know exactly where um, each of the back slabs go on the top and bottom piece. So what I do with this black ribbon or blue ribbon is I align it on the piece. I have a hook on one end and then I know exactly where each of the holes has to go so that um, the back slab will align. Um, I'm going to have to find another way of doing that because the ribbon is a little bit too flimsy. Um, but the proof of concept worked. Next we have this other drilling jig which uh, is used to drill the holes for the seat slabs and the back slat. Um, what I do is you just use take the piece and you make sure it's flush with the bottom and you make sure it's flush with the back and then you choose the top hole for the back slats and the bottom hole for the seat slats. Um, once I have access to a drilling drill press, I'll be able to do that without having to have this piece and it'll increase my accuracy. Finally, the last jig, which is this board down here, is to ensure that I can install the back um, of the chair without and making sure that the two pieces are parallel so that the top back support and the bottom back support are parallel to each other when I install the seat slats. Um, and I make sure that they're aligned as well. Okay, then the first step of the build is to transfer the dimensions from the stencil onto our 1 by 8 inch nominal pine wood board. And so we lay them out, trace them out, make sure we avoid any knots in the wood that would interfere or compromise the integrity of the pieces. And so once all the pieces are traced out, then we can head in with the jigsaw and cut out all the round uh, parts um, and make sure that that's all set up before we can move to the table saw and cut out things like the back slats, the seat slats, and uh, any other straight components. Okay, so once our pieces are all um, cut on the table saw and the jigsaw, and we're sure that all the dimensions are right and there's no um, rough corners where the routing a bit might get stuck. We can move on to our routing table, which I built myself uh, from just a, an old table that I had in the shop and a piece of MDF. I uh, 
um, cut a hole in the middle for the uh, bit to come through, and then I uh, countersunk the uh, the routing, router um, into the MDF wood and attached it with those three screws that you see there. I then turned on the router uh, so that whenever I plug it in, it'll automatically turn on, and I added this extension cord, which would allow me to turn the router off or on from um, outside, so I don't have to reach under the table to turn anything off. Um, I can just reach the side, turn it off, and uh, and have that set. So I've got my pieces here, and I know which edges need to be rounded. I use my one quarter inch uh, routing bit with the um, bearing on top, place it in the routing, routing table, and then I just feed my pieces along the router. Um, making sure that I don't have any rough edges or that uh, I don't get any tear out from the router. Once that step's complete, then I can move on to the sanding. Uh, it's important to sand all the edges, making sure that there's no splinters or rough edges or anything that um, might reduce the quality of the piece. And then we move on to the, the drilling jig, which I showed earlier. Drill all the holes in our pieces, both for the seat slats and the back slats. And then we can move on to assembly. Once the chair is fully assembled, the final step is just to oil the chair. Um, I did this with two coats of tongue oil, um, just because I like the look of the natural uh, pine. The last thing I wanna talk about in this video is the cost tracker. So seeing as I want to make Adirondack chairs and sell them online, I need to be able to track my costs, both material costs and labor costs. So on the left side, I wrote down all the material costs that I have, the 30 linear feet of pine wood, um, the stainless steel screws, the carriage bolts, and the tongue oil. That comes out to around $135 in material costs. And then for the labor costs, I have the jigsaw, table saw, routing, sanding, and oiling, which come out to around $95 of labor cost at $20 an hour. Um, so I am currently selling the chairs at $175 and you can see already that my costs are higher than my uh, sale price, which means that I'm currently operating at a loss on my uh, Adirondack chairs. Um, I haven't optimized this yet because I think that there's a lot of time that I can cut out of labor and there's a lot of costs that I can cut out of my materials um, so that I can reach a target profit margin of around 15%. Um, I have not yet sold any chairs, but again, one of them is on display at uh, the JTM Sawmill, and I'm hoping once summer rolls around that I'll be um, collecting some sales from that, as well as setting up my online shop. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and leave any comments in the comment section as to how I might improve the build, or uh, where I might be able to save some money. Um, and then I'll uh, see you on the next video.